So really, we don't want to think about what we're eating. You know, I love hot dogs. You can't eat a hot dog in public. There's always one friend that's like, do you know what those are made of? I don't want to know. Because hot dogs are like strippers. No one wants to know the backstory. <laughs> well, when I was 12, not interested. Let's put mustard on that. I can say that joke, because I used to be a stripper. I was so good, they paid me to put my clothes back on. I understand weddings are an important event where we spend a lot of money so that the bride can pretend to be a princess and marry her prince and live happily ever after because magic exists. <laughs> and we're a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> weddings are kind of weird. I mean, what's the logic? It's like, well, we love each other. Why don't we pretend we have a kingdom? We'll invite your parents' friends and my parents' friends, and we'll have a banquet. <laughs> and the two kingdoms shall come together as one. <laughs> and we can start our married life with a total fantasy <laughs> before we go on a completely unjustified vacation. <laughs> it's strange, right? I mean, weddings started off as these crude medieval ceremonies where women, daughters, were exchanged as property. Yet over the course of centuries, they got worse. That's why people cry at weddings. I can't believe we're still wasting money on this. Whenever I see someone crying at a wedding, I would say, don't worry, it probably won't work out. <laughs> it is nice to be invited to a wedding, but you always look at that invitation like, ah, this is gonna cost me. <laughs> oh good, it's out of town. Wouldn't want to use those vacation days for vacationing. And you can tell how much a wedding's gonna cost you by the type of invitation you receive. You're like, oh no, this one's made of baby skin. <laughs> and that font and the language on there. The Honorable Kingslayer <laughs> cordially invites you to the marriage of his 40-year-old daughter <laughs> to a live-in boyfriend of 12 years. <laughs> Ring that wallet. Because you have to get the newlyweds a gift, because they've done nothing! <laughs> so you go to the registry, the registry, which is a nice way of saying, you don't have to get us anything, but when you do, make sure it's one of these things. <laughs> you ever go to the registry late, you're like, ah, oh, the only thing left is a fork for $300. <laughs> I guess we'll be the fork friends. <laughs> we'll get them the fork. My wife had us register for fine china, because you never know when the Pope's gonna swing by <laughs> and want a microwaved hot dog on a $200 plate. <laughs> my parents, growing up, my parents had fine china that you couldn't even put in the dishwasher. <gasps> Don't get that wet, you need to clean it with a kitten. <laughs> it needs to be a white kitten. And most weddings, the guests receive a gift, right? Sometimes it's like a bag of almonds covered in candy. Thanks, I guess we're even. <laughs> Since you got me a bag of nuts. Feel free to take the centerpiece. Sure, you don't want us to bust some tables? Uh, I didn't bring a broom, but I could sweep. It's not always like nuts. Sometimes the gift is like a knick-knack or a Happy Meal toy kind of thing. The last wedding we are at, everyone at the wedding got a wine stopper filled with sand because the theme of the wedding was waste. <laughs> <laughs> I got in trouble when I asked the bride. I was like, at what point are we supposed to jab this in our throat? <laughs> During the first dance? <laughs> That's horrible. I do find it fascinating. There's always a drunk person at a wedding, right? And I think it's because there's so many awkward moments. Like, like that receiving line as a guest. I never know what to say to those people. I always feel like I've just seen a friend in a play or something. That was great, you were great out there. <laughs> but you said, I like this program. Well, I'm gonna lie to someone else now. <laughs> you were good too, you're the grandma. Uh, we, we got them the fork. <laughs> Is the bar open? 
some of those wedding rituals. Have you been to one of the weddings where the groom removes the girder belt from the bride and flings it to a crowd of perverts? <laughs> because he cherishes his bro. What? <laughs> Who came up with that one? Hey, you know how the bride throws the bouquet? How about something for the fellas? <laughs> Maybe the bride's underwear. <laughs> what happens to that garter belt? Oh, I have it in a very special place. <laughs> it's in a room covered with photographs of the bride. <laughs> and there's candles and fried bread everywhere. But if you've been to a bar, you've probably been to a filthy public restroom. We've all been in those bars where you're like, oh, wow, now I know why they serve alcohol here. <laughs> and when I'm talking about uh, the filthy bathroom, I'm talking about the men's room. I don't know about the ladies' room. I haven't been in there in like a week. <laughs> but the men's room, I don't know what happens to guys when we go into a public restroom. Some anger comes out. <laughs> Some of the stuff that's written on the walls. You never have a friend admit it, like, hey, give me a second, I gotta pee and draw a swastika, I'll be right back. <laughs> There's guys writing things on the walls, and then there are the guys that reply. <laughs> Some guy write, this place sucks, another guy write, no, you suck. <laughs> As if that first guy is ever gonna see that. <laughs> like he's gathering up his friends, well, this is what I wrote on this. Hey, wait a minute! <laughs> that guy said I suck! You double suck. <laughs> but all public restrooms, even when you go, even at fancy places, you ever go in the, the restroom and there's a bathroom attendant? Aren't you always like, oh no, <laughs> call me a loner, but if there's one thing I don't want anyone attending, <laughs> it's when I'm using the restroom, <laughs> let alone someone sticking around to sell me a paper towel. <laughs> they don't sell, they always wave it at you like, here, you don't have to tip me, you can just have bad luck the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to tip the bathroom attendant. You can't justify not tipping. You can't be like, ah, he doesn't need it. He's just working next to a toilet. <laughs> you have to tip the bathroom attendant. Sometimes the bathroom attendant will have an incentive for a tip. They'll have, like, gum and cologne on a shelf. No thanks on the gum. I'm sure a lot of that flavor's probably been knocked away here in your office. <laughs> Where'd you get the gum? Bathroom. Yeah, some stranger in a half a tuck sold it to me. <laughs> what flavor is it, bathroom? <laughs> and the cologne, you know, talk about a place you don't want to pick up a scent. <laughs> well, you smell different. Bathroom again. <laughs> same guy had a jug of liquid sitting on a shelf. I just sprayed myself. <laughs> Good guy, I'm moving in with him. The most memorable public restroom I was in was a uh, New York City Park men's room, which doubles as a crime scene. <laughs> the difference being that crime scenes are eventually cleaned up. <laughs> We've all been in those scary bathrooms. You're like, what happened in here? The lights are on, but it's really dark. There's water everywhere. For some reason, there's a film crew from Ghost Hunters. <laughs> I have been to Victoria's Secret. I had a reason. You know, as a man, you need a reason to be in Victoria's Secret. You can't just be in there like, I'm looking around! <laughs> See what you ladies are buying. <laughs> it's getting my wife something for Valentine's Day. You have to reach a point in a relationship where you can get a woman something from Victoria's Secret. It's not like a first date thing, like, thanks for meeting me for dinner. I got you a bustier. <laughs> Why don't you go in the bagno and throw that on? <laughs> Secretly, every guy wants to go in Victoria's Secret. We walk by in the mall, we're like, oh, one day. <laughs> one day I'll have a reason. Because, you know, we've seen the catalog. You don't even have to search out the catalog. It just shows up in your mail. You're like, oh, what's this? Seems like there's some good articles in here. <laughs> if I wasn't married, I could get rejected by all these women. And guys, we're just dumb enough. We see that Victoria's Secret store and we think, maybe that's where those models live. <laughs> They're probably in there right now walking around in angel's wings. <laughs> They're probably in there having a pillow fight right now. <laughs> if I could find a practical reason to go in there, it would be amazing. 
And then you finally go into Victoria's Secret, and it's like a Greyhound bus station. <laughs> what are you guys in between shifts in here? Where's all the angels? There's just stressed out sales ladies with headsets on. Underwear, underwear, underwear. <laughs> Where's the open bar? <laughs> but you're still a guy in a woman's underwear store, and you don't want to look like a creep. That's why every man at Victoria's Secret has the same expression on his face of boring. <laughs> this place is boring because I'm not a pervert. There's nothing stimulating in here because it's boring to me, especially those huge posters of supermodels, mostly naked. <laughs> Boor <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking for, so I went up to a sales lady who had the warmth of a TSA screener. <laughs> what do you want? Nothing. I didn't touch anything. I'm leaving. I'm trying to be discreet. I was like, look, I'm looking for something for my wife. Uh, she's, she's very intelligent. Uh, She's creative. Because you can't say I'm looking for a slutty outfit. <laughs> she, she volunteers. <laughs> She's organized. Maybe that French maid's outfit would be good. <laughs> and I was thrown because the sales lady was like, what size? And I was like, size? Uh, female? <laughs> Small? Because <laughs> you don't want to guess too big. You don't want to be like, hey, you grow into it. <laughs> I thought you was much bigger. You can't ask a stranger, like, hey, excuse me there, lady. You look like you got a keister like my wife's. <laughs> what size undies you got there? Maybe you could try on this uh, outfit I got. <laughs> I just wanted it over with. When I was paying, I assumed the awkwardness was over until they handed me my purchase in a bright pink Victoria's Secret bag <laughs> that I had to carry around the mall the rest of the day that might as well have just said pervert on the side. <laughs> Me and my ladies undies. I like ladies undies so much, I got a bag full of them. <laughs> Heading into Burger King. <laughs> Y'all have a Whopper with cheese and a small fries for the ladies undies. <laughs> when I got home, I realized you have to find the right time to give your gift from Victoria's Secret. You can't be like, hey, when well, you're done changing that diaper, I got another changey poo for you. <laughs> It's a little gift from me to you that's really for me. Because <laughs> if you're buying a woman something from Victoria's Secret, it's really a gift for you. It's like, here, I got me this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm welcome. <laughs> I'm never going back there again. <laughs> I see some of you are drinking. That's not the answer. It's not eating is. It's amazing how our attitude on alcohol changes, right? Because even as a teenager, you know it's wrong. You're like, you know, I don't like the taste of it, but I want to look cool. And then in your 20s, you're like, you know what? This kind of gives me confidence to talk to the opposite sex. And then in your 40s, you're like, you know what? This is the only thing I like about being alive. <laughs> it's only funny because it's true. I'm sure some of you are going to go to some bars, head to a bar, right? Yeah. I never really feel comfortable right when I get in a bar. I'm always kind of like, who are all these strangers? But after a couple of beers, I'm like, these guys are probably my best friends. Because <laughs> your experience in a bar changes over the course of the night, right? As the night goes on, you see really why we go to bars. We go to bars so we can behave like children. Toddlers, really. You ever go to a bar at 2 a.m.? You might as well be picking up a kid at nursery school. <laughs> It's the same experience. The behavior's the same in both places. Both places, there's always some strange yelling for no reason at all, you know? <laughs> both places, you go in the bathroom, it's obvious not everyone's potty trained. <laughs> both places, there's always someone crying, she was my best friend, <laughs> but not anymore. Both places, occasionally, there's a fight. You know, he was standing where I wanted to stand. <laughs> so I punched him in the head. <laughs> I need more juice. <laughs> but at 2 a.m., people are drunk in bars. I love how we're always surprised when someone's drunk in a bar. We're actually shocked. We're like, look at that guy. <laughs> He's wasted <laughs> in a bar. <laughs> I came here to read a novel. Mostly the people that are drunk in bars are drunk because they're drinking shots. And 
Really, the only time to ever drink a shot is never. <laughs> no one's ever drank a shot and then done something they're proud of. <laughs> like, oh, I got wasted last night, and then I went out and built some low-income housing. <laughs> that never happens. You always wake up the next day, and you're like, I need a new identity. <laughs> Maybe two of them. Because if you're drinking shots, it's either your birthday or you're trying to forget you were ever born. <laughs> there is something honest about a shot. It's like, I want to get right to the embarrassing part of the night. <laughs> right to pants off. <laughs> but we don't even drink shots. We take them like they're medicine. This will cure my normal behavior. <laughs> Everyone acts like we're in a Western. Whoa, 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 whoa. That'll give me the courage to confront this plate of nachos. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Strangers will buy you a shot. You brother, hey, I don't know you, let me buy you a shot. This never happens with anything else. Hey, what do you see, you and me? Let's do some appetizers. <laughs> Jalapeno poppers, mano a mano. <laughs> you gotta turn that shot down before they get it poured, because once it's poured, they act like you're rejecting a sweater they crocheted you. <laughs> You know how hard I worked on this? You didn't at all. <laughs> but I don't mind the bars. Unless they're really crowded, you know, like five or six people deep at the bar, everyone's competing for the bartender's attention. We look like we're trying to get disaster relief from the Red Cross. So I... <laughs> I need mine more than he needs his! I can never get the bartender's attention. I'm always like, you try and make eye contact. Right? Show them you have money. I have cash. <laughs> but you can't try too hard in a crowded bar. You have to act out cool. You have to be like, I don't even care if I get served. I just like standing in crowded, uncomfortable places. <laughs> Later on, I'm going to swing by the airport, see what that TSA line's like. <laughs> I like the lines. Never enough bartenders in a crowded bar. Those bartenders look like they're in the middle of a triage unit. They're like, give me 40 cc's or something. <laughs> Never enough bartenders. You ever get faked out by the arrival of a bar back? You're like, finally, another bar. It's a bar back. <laughs> and those poor bar backs, they always act like they're not qualified to serve you. Like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I can carry 12 cases up a narrow staircase, but handing you a beer, not yet. <laughs> I'm still learning <laughs> from the master. Because in a crowded bar, the bartender is the master, right? All the authority goes to that. Some of them act like they're not even obligated to serve you. They're like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this booze. Maybe I'll just pour it out and make a puddle. <laughs> and we fall for it. We're like, well, it's either deal with this guy or make it in our bathtub at home. <laughs> Damn prohibition. There's male and female bartenders. Female bartenders, they always seem a little tougher than they need to be, right? I don't want to say bitchy, because that would describe them perfectly. <laughs> Not all of them. Some female bartenders definitely go off that vibe, like, don't hit on me, treat me with respect, and don't be distracted by the fact I'm wearing a bikini. <laughs> okay, honey. They always call you honey like they're your grandma or something. What can I get you, honey? I don't know, a birthday card with $2 in it? Uh... Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand-up, I have more stand-up. Or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, that's available on my channel. But also, just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.